our nation right now on the National Weather Desk. On the move, will the weather impact your holiday travel plans? Most of the eastern half of the U.S. should be fair. Also, how long will it take to remove all that snow in Buffalo? I think they're honestly doing the best that they can. How climate change is impacting the nation's golf courses. If we haven't had a storm, I mean, you'd shut the course down for a week. How a NASA scientist found her place working at the space agency. We need more scientists. We need people that think differently than science as well. And we'll take you soaring over Seattle and the Puget Sound. From our nation's capital, this is the National Weather Desk. Good morning and welcome to the National Weather Desk. I'm meteorologist Veronica Johnson. Today is one of the busiest travel days of the year. So let's take a look at the forecast across the country for this Thanksgiving holiday with meteorologist Michael Ernberg. Thanksgiving just a few days off and a lot of you will be traveling as we go on through your Wednesday. Most of the eastern half of the U.S. should be fair. There's going to be a little bit of snow across Montana and also Wyoming and northern sections of Colorado and the Rocky Mountain states. Though as we go into Thursday, a wet low pressure air will get going from the Midwest down to the Gulf Coast states. This will be a wet weather maker except for snow on the western fringe. It moves up through the east coast as we head on to Friday. Areas like Charlotte, D.C., New York, Boston getting rain. Maybe some snow and ice for far northern New England in the mountains. Another storm gets going in Texas and the Gulf Coast on Saturday. That moves into the southeastern states and then once again up through the northeast and mid-Atlantic on Sunday. Seattle has finally ended its record-setting dry streak, but the rain wasn't enough to end the drought. For more, let's head to meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell, who's in Seattle, Washington. Well, hi there, everybody. I'm meteorologist Shannon O'Donnell here in the Pacific Northwest, Seattle. We just wrapped up the longest November dry spell ever recorded at SeaTac Airport. This is supposed to be one of our soggiest months. Everybody knows it around the country. Seattle is a rainy location, especially this time of year but not this year. In 2022, we went two full weeks, 14 days, November 8th through 21st, without a drop of rain in sight. It was crystal clear and sunny. Finally broke that on Tuesday with a good soaking storm coming through, but it had been quite some time since we'd had any rainfall there in the Emerald City. As such, the drought continues to worsen out west, especially out of California, where in some cases it is reading as exceptional. But after playing so much catch up last spring, we had a soggy March through May in the Pacific Northwest. You can see we're starting to head back into the moderately dry uh, period here in November of all things back in western Washington. It's been five days since the snow first started falling in Buffalo and snow removal efforts continue today. Some communities are questioning if the city is moving fast enough. Reporter Maya Skinner now in Buffalo, New York with more. Plowing crews are on phase two. Martin addressed concerns from residents about not seeing a plow. This part of the city is snow removal. I mean, you'll see some of our plow equipment tightening up some of the mains and streets, but a lot of the streets, plows could not get down, right? They just weren't accessible. Martin says 113 pieces of equipment, along with 17 trucks from New York State, were being used to hit the southern area of the city. Residents living off of South Park Avenue say they're being patient. I think they're honestly doing the best that they can. I think they learned from November. There's nowhere to put it. Well, they're working day and night, and now we see them going up and down, and there's so much snow that they have to unload the dump trucks to take the snow away. Residents also say they've taken some of the work into their own hands just to get out of their driveway and helping others, too. Did you have to do any of your own uh, shoveling out today? Today, no, it melted. I, I had shoveled out the last three days, so and I had some help. Liz helped across the street, uh, the twins down the street helped. Parts of Texas now gearing up for a winter storm this holiday weekend after a series of storms that strained resources in early 2021. Officials want residents to get ready for any brutal weather that that next system could bring. This includes the possibility of a shelter stay. We head now to Austin, Texas, where reporter Betty Cross has more. Winter storm Uri was a worst case scenario. Many lost power and struggled to stay warm. The harsh conditions also burst pipes and caused water systems to fail. The bleak situation pushed Austin to rework its emergency preparedness plan. Being ready. Robert Moreno helps the city get emergency supplies to the people who need them most. 
He says this warehouse is no longer the single distribution point for food, water, cots, hygiene kits, and other emergency supplies. We recognize that the ability for us to get supplies out was going to be very limiting because of the conditions of roads. To be better prepared, this year Austin almost doubled the number of recreation centers that can be used as emergency shelters. Well, last season we started out with five and then we've uh, added an additional four, so we have nine. Each of the shelters will have 75 cots and the pillows, sheets, and other supplies needed to weather a storm. We also have water and, and food enough to uh, sustain 75 people for 72 hours. But keep in mind, the city is only providing the basics. For anything else, people need to also have their own preparedness plan. To help you better prepare, here's what's in the hygiene kit. You get some bathing wipes, a disposable towel, four oral swabs that you could use to clean your teeth, and a hairbrush. As you can see, this is the bare minimum. You probably also want to have deodorant, toothpaste, maybe even an actual toothbrush instead of a swab. That means you need to prepare so that you can be comfortable if you ever need to go to a shelter. This website has recommendations about how to build an emergency supply kit. Experts say having medications and other personal supplies ready to go can make a disaster less stressful or even make the difference between life and death. Bad weather led SpaceX to scrub yesterday's scheduled launch of a Dragon spacecraft. The mission will help resupply the International Space Station. The spacecraft will carry 7,700 pounds of supplies. And the delay is not grounding the excitement for these high schools, uh, science students in Northern Virginia. That's because a satellite they engineered from scratch will be on that rocket when it eventually lifts off. It'll be handed to astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Yesterday, students celebrated along with NASA and aerospace industry officials. It's incredible to see like because we're high school students, right? Most people who launch these things have like graduate degrees. Um, and the fact that a, a team like this is able to put a satellite together uh, is, is pretty amazing. It, not only did they put the thing together, but they got it to work. Space is really hard. Um, getting things into space and getting things to work in space is not an easy task. It's like a 50-50 shot as to whether or not it's actually going to work. Um, so if it actually does work, we're going to be just very excited. The next launch opportunity for the rocket carrying the student satellite will be Saturday. All right, Yosemite National Park is one of the nation's treasures home to Half Dome. Glacier Point in Yosemite Falls, the view's absolutely breathtaking. But did you know that you can ice skate there and still enjoy those views? Reporter Sophia Lesios has more. It's just a beautiful experience like no other to ice skate. Curry Village Ice Rink is in the heart of Yosemite National Park with breathtaking views. You get Half Dome to one side and then Glacier Point to the other, so you're ice skating in a really iconic location. It's just not the same ice skating in like a t-shirt. Uh, you get to bundle up, you get your cozy hat, you get nice and cozy in your, your layers, um, and you really get the full ice skating experience. The ice rink opened in 1928, according to Yosemite National Park's website meaning this rink has been bringing the holiday spirit to everyone who visits for nearly 100 years. I mean, what's more holiday than getting cozy, being super warm, grabbing hot chocolate and ice skating? Have you ever wondered what happens to a soap bubble when it's freezing outside? Here's what happened to one that landed on this shrub in Reno, Nevada. Take a look at this magic, or in this case, the science. How cool is that? Within seconds, it starts to crystallize and forms patterns. Then it eventually freezes. 